Here now is Steve Coonan, former Department of Energy Under Secretary for Science and author of the wonderful book, Unsettled, which you all have to read if you want to get to the bottom of all this. Uh, Steve, great to see you. Thank you for being here again. Um, let me just read from the Wall Street Journal. They had an editorial climate, Doomsday is Nigh Again. And they say the UN report suggests taxing foods based on their carbon emissions so that meat becomes an ex so expensive that people have no choice but to vote to go vegan. I mean, the point is, once again, how elitist this whole idea is that the only people who will be able to afford meat once they tax it up 100 or 200 percent above that which it's already gone because of inflation, um, the only people who could afford it would be millionaires. So it's a pure elitist message to the world, right? It it, it is carbon colonialism is the way I like Oh, that's a good it. one. Let me, let, let me say that, you know, I enjoy a good steak myself. And most of us in the developed world, uh, one and a half billion of us, um, eat meat. And, uh, you know, we have canine teeth for a reason. Yeah. But there are six and a half billion people who are in the developing world, most of whom do not have the ability to eat meat. And mm -hmm. they would love to be doing that. Mm -hmm. And it is immoral to deny them that opportunity. I got. I, I have to agree with you that it's also immoral to spend these trillions of dollars for what you get out of it. These trillions of dollars that are supposedly used, we've spent in the past 10 years, and I think this is an understatement, but they say that we've spent $3.8 trillion uh, in the past decade on non-renewables to, to get us off of uh, fossil fuels. But guess what? Fossil fuels for energy has gone from 82% of our energy down to 81%. With all those trillions, we've only been able to hook it down 1% from 82 to 81. Uh, that certainly doesn't sound like a good deal to me, does it to you? No, not not at all. You know, every year the UN runs this conference. The next one starts on Sunday in Egypt. And every year, this is the 27th conference, we hear it's the last best chance to avoid the worst effects of climate change. And, of course, emissions keep going up. And, uh, you know, at some point we should acknowledge that this is not the way we should be dealing with this situation. And they want to spend, by the way, another four trillion dollars almost immediately on, on non-renewables. And, and I mean, the world is in crisis for a reason. And one of those reasons or for several reasons. And one of those reasons an economic crisis is nigh is because of the fact that they have been spending diverting so many trillions of dollars uh, to these things that are just having an incremental effect on on some of the fossil fuel and gases that are produced from that. Uh, but even if we assent to spending another four trillion dollars, and I don't think we can afford it right now, uh, we have the the fact that China is building more coal power plants. Right. So China is going to keep yeah. building coal power plants. You know, um, we, we should realize that the effects of uh, warming as projected over the next century, are quite manageable. Uh, the people who have exaggerated the urgency and magnitude of this threat are really are doing all of us a disservice. They're distracting from more urgent needs, and boy, do we have many of them. And they've also really scared the bejesus out of young people. And that's just so wrong. And the reason we're talking about the U.N., by the way, is a lot of people in this administration have close ties with the U.N. John Kerry relies on their information. Uh, we only have about 20 seconds. But how have their past uh, suggestions and progn prognostications about the future of climate change, how have they worked out in reality? You know, the climate uh, has turned out to be much more benign than was projected, let's say, a decade ago. No long trends in storms. Um, in droughts and floods across the world, despite the hyping of weather events every year. Yeah. Weather is not climate. And but, so things yeah. are going along just fine. By the way, I, I, I should have mentioned, you used to work in the Obama administration covering this issue as well. So it's, it's not like it's a partisan issue for you. Uh, Steve, great to see you. Again, the book is unsettled. You can't get a better book on this whole subject. Uh, go out and buy it immediately. Thank you so much for being here. Steve Coonan, good great to see chatting. you. Great chatting.